Okay, in these kinds of AP exam practice problems, you're given a data table with a bunch of information that's not yet relevant. You're not sure how you're gonna use that stuff yet. And then they give you abstract information about the function. They say h of x is x times f of x plus g of 2x minus five. And they ask you about the derivative. So I just recopied h of x here a little bit bigger. And since you're being asked about h prime of 3, that means you need to find, need to find h prime of x first. You need the general formula for the derivative, and then once you find h prime of x, you'll be able to plug in 3 to that formula. So we have the function, and we have to find its derivative. So we don't have all the details about this function. Some of it's kind of abstract, but you look at each piece of the function, you see how it's put together. So for this first part, it's x times f of x. So this part is gonna be product rule. And the second piece is g of 2x minus five. Anytime you read out a piece of a function with an of, that is suggesting chain rule. So this whole piece here is gonna be chain rule. So each of these two pieces, we're gonna use different rules for. This first piece is gonna be a product rule, and the second piece will be a chain rule in order to find h prime of x. Okay, so first I'm gonna put in, for this first part, which I'll circle in blue, we need to write, or I like to write the template for the product rule. So it's blank times blank plus blank times blank. And then later, we're gonna deal with this second piece that I'll circle in green with the chain rule. So we're gonna add the derivative of this chain rule piece, which will be a piece times another piece. Okay, so let's deal with the product rule first. How do you take the derivative of two pieces that are being multiplied? Well, in the first slot, you're gonna take the derivative of the first piece. So what's the derivative of x? It's one. And then you write the second piece without changing it at all. So that's a plain old f of x. In this third slot, you're gonna just write the first piece without changing it at all. So that's a plain old x. And then in the last piece, you're gonna write the derivative of the second piece. We don't know anything about f of x, so the derivative you just write generically as f prime of x. And then we take the derivative of this green circled part. Since it's a nested function, we start with the chain rule. We take the derivative of the outside part of the function, which is just g. So we don't know any details about g, so we just write the derivative of the outside part as g prime. And you plug in the original inside part, so g prime of 2x minus 5 times the derivative of whatever was inside your function. So the derivative of 2x minus 5 is 2, so times 2. All right, so there's your formula for h prime of x. Now, since they want h prime of 3, we just go right below it. h prime of 3 is going to be the h prime of x formula, where everywhere we see an x, we put a 3. So it'll be 1 times f of 3 plus 3 times f prime of 3 plus g prime of 2 times 3 minus 5 all times 2. Okay, so copy and paste it a 3 anywhere I saw an x. And now we just have to simplify to turn this into a number so we can match it with one of the multiple choice answers. So the one we can stop writing because that won't change the answer. F of three. Well, now that we're stuck, we don't know anything about F. The only information we're given is in this table. So we look F of three. Okay, they gave us that information. That's negative four. Negative four plus three times F prime of three. We're stuck and the only information we have is from this table. F prime of three is four so times four plus 
This is g prime of six minus five. So this is g prime of one, all times two. So we'll keep simplifying this now. Equals, and we have negative four plus three times four, 12 plus, okay, g prime of one, we can now be more specific. We'll get that off the table, g prime of one, that's gonna be negative two. So here we put negative two times two, and we just keep simplifying. We're getting close now. So we have negative four plus 12 minus four, okay. So we have eight minus four, four. Okay, great. And does that match one of our answer choices? Yep, it matches answer choice A.